Welcome everybody back to another special episode of the Money Pop Podcast. And what we're doing today is we're talking college. College football. I know you guys have been asking for this one. Um, we usually do our show on Sundays, but we wanted to do a special quick about uh, somewhere between about 20 minutes to a half an hour, giving you just specifically college football plays, because I know you guys always ask for it and you catch me on Twitter and stuff like that. So we want to make sure we give you the plays that you want, the plays that you need. And as always, make sure you hit that subscribe, that notification button. So now you know, not just when you go, when we go live on Sundays, but now that you know, when we post up our college plays, we're going to try to do it on Wednesday possibly Friday, counting how the schedule is going. Obviously, you can see we're doing it midday. But we're going to also introduce a new um, guest to the show who's going to be helping us on what our college plays. Like me, like you, I could always use some extra help. You know, I could always use some extra advice to win this money. So that's what we're here to do. We're doing it together. I want to make sure that you guys get all the information that you need and that I see I need. So I'm looking at the lines the right way. You're looking at the run lines the right way. So we can put in the first, uh, put on our bets the right way. So of course, I got to introduce my in, the, the degenerate brother. I need, I need to get some lunch in me. Work got me tripping, but I'm going to first introduce my degenerate brother. You know him. I love him. They call him Diddy. What's up, boy? What's up? What's up, man? Good to be on the show, man. Give these people what they want. You know, yeah, keep, man. Give them what they need. Give them what they quick need. And, uh, quick and to the point. Yeah, know? quick and to the point, man. We're going to try fast. And then I'm going to introduce you guys to the next guy. Um, kind of funny how we found each other. He was uh, a friend of the show, follows the show, like how we do our show. And then it come found out that he was an old alumni of, of mine. So it made it even more sense for us to keep talking. We kept talking. I made him some money. He made me some money. We like that type of friendship, man. We call him C-Sharp, man. What's up, boy? What up, what up, what up? Good What's to be on, on here. Man? Yeah, man. All the way from Oklahoma, baby. Yeah, man. Transplant. Born and raised in uh, Philadelphia, uh, Montgomery County. Uh, went to Ohio State. Now living in Oklahoma. I wish I could say our high school football team uh, was decent, but, boy, they're not even competitive. Yeah, I know. I saw that. They get, well, I mean – McDevitt out in Harrisburg is for real football, though. Like they're for yeah, they, real out there. They got a tough schedule. You're not lying, but man, they're they're not competitive. Yeah, yeah. So uh, C Sharp, that's my guy, B Diddy. He's actually right around the corner. Um, he went to Springfield, right up the street. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Played. A, I kicked for the football team, so I, I kicked in that stadium for sure. Yeah, man. For you to be a, a transplant, you really caught that accent really good down there man a lot of a lot of people say that a lot of people say that yeah i, I uh my mom's from california my dad's from upstate new york so like i, I feel like i never really had a philadelphia accent i'm kind of mm. all over the place. oh gotcha. good oh good so this is what we're here man this is the new crew the new fo uh, college football crew so what we're going to do here is round table we're going to give our three to five best plays of the day um, and then we're just all going to conversate what we like, what we don't like, um, try to keep it short, try to keep it brief. Like I said, giving the people what they need real quick. So I, I'm going to go with you, C-Sharp, man. I know you're excited to get things going, man. I know we can talk forever about sports, but what you got on week three, what is one of the top plays that you're looking at right now? Yeah, I'll, I'll honestly get it kicked off tonight. Uh, why wait till tomorrow? Yeah, there you uh, go. We, we can like earn it. a little bit of money tonight. Um, I'm talking about Florida State versus Louisville. Um, Florida State's coming off my my only concern a little bit. Kind of goes into this play. My my only concern. This line opened at Pickham, so originally I did off the bat liked Florida State just to outright win this game. Yeah. Since then, there's been a lot of money coming in. I mean, now you're looking at a field goal. It might even be crossing a field goal as we are recording right now at some books. I always tell people to shop around. Absolutely. If you're in a legal state, you need to have five, six, seven books open. Lines are changing. Some might cross a key number at three and a half. Some might stay at two and a half within the same hour. You got to shop around. Um, with that being said, currently on Bet Rivers, the over under is still at 57.5. I see a lot of value in the under there. Um, I, I, I really do. I, I just think Florida State's the better team. But I think with 10 days off, some might think they're going to get a lot of scripted plays. I don't think that works the same in college. You're not practicing every day like an NFL team 
where you have hours to do scripted plays, it, it college is going to come out sluggish. So you could look at the first half under, but I think 57-5 total in that game is, I hate to say free money, but I, I see almost a field goal of value. I would put that over under at like 54. So the fact you're getting more than a field goal, to me, that's that's autoplay. Uh, like that. You hear these new words, free money and autoplay. I like it. I like it. All right, B. Diddy, let's go around the horn, man. What you got for me? No, I agree. I also like Florida State on that line, too. It be lucky if you were able to reach that line when it first came out, when it was shorter than three, three and a half. But I think they're seeing at three. Still getting a field goal here. I think Florida State's the better team. Um, it is a primetime game. They are coming off a bye. So they, you know, that really big, tough game they had on primetime against LSU. Uh, get that, you know, kind of get to shake that off a little bit. They had an easy one last week. But I do also like that number there you were saying as far as under 57. It should be about 54, 55. I agree. Just depending on what Louisville team shows up tonight. Um, but I do like Florida State on the number. If you can buy half a point to get under three, if you're getting it now, I see them winning by at least a field goal or more. Um, but I'm going to go with um, – I really like Georgia. Georgia, you, uh, South Carolina is a game I'm looking at really, really closely. Uh, Stenson Benson has been awesome on offensive line. Actually, he's not being spoke about for Heisman early on. I know it's still early, but I think the way he's been looking, he should be in that in that race, at least at least in the top five somewhere. Um, going against South Carolina, South Carolina has been hit with injury bug early. Uh, they've lost two of their best defenders last week um, and also two starters on their offensive line, too. So um, Give me UGA. I'm going to take that point and a half. I'm also going to put them in pretty much all my teasers to get them down to about 14 and a 10-point teaser. So UGA is a big play for me. Whether you want to play in first half, you can play in full game. I think they actually mop South Carolina here in this matchup, um, giving giving at least a 48 to maybe 17 type game. I, I like them really big here. Yeah, we were uh, – me and C-Sharp were looking at this game, and interesting enough, um, and the line is just kind of everywhere. And um, it, it's almost like the back door's priced in, like you said. You're looking at South Carolina to make 17, but the over and other, some books I was looking at was like 15 and a half, and it was just a weird number to land on, right? Why is that not a little bit like 16 and a half? And it's almost like the books don't want to give the edge um, for, that, for, that, uh, for that team total. Um, for South Carolina, and even um, just the way the numbers added up, C Sharp pointed this out to me, was that um, the back it's almost like the the back door is being priced in. So um, we both had agreed that it was kind of like a stay away game. It was just something fishy about that line that didn't make sense. But I'm not I'm not mad at the take. It's just the way Georgia's been playing. Um, it doesn't seem like uh, South Carolina uh, has a lot of chance in this game. Um, but we just felt like that line was just a little, just a little. Yeah, off. mainly it's the injuries for me. I don't see how South Carolina can move the ball against that defense. That's that's my biggest thing. I think their defense is too tight, and when they add those injuries to that um, on both sides of the ball for South Carolina, it's 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 just telling me it's going to be a mop. Um, you know. So B Diddy, B Diddy, let me ask you a question. Would sure. you pull, would you pull the trigger then on uh, South Carolina's team total prop? Because here's my thing: when this line opened. That Georgia was favored by 24, which I power rated it more like 27, 28. And then I went in and looked at the team total props, and it was off. The team total props, the difference was 27 and a half. And I thought South Carolina's was really low at 13 and a half when it opened. And that immediately jumped to 15 and a half. So, like, there's definitely some sharp people out there. You know, right. it could be some syndicates that put down a lot of money to get that individual total on one team to jump up, which that told me when I only saw the line at 24, that almost told me that the books are saying George is going to be up by 31 late and Spencer Rattler is going to score some random, you know, no one cares. Freshmen are in there. He lights them okay. up for a big play backdoor cover. So yeah, that's a good I, point. I'm with you. If you like your 17 points. I do like that score. Like the way you, you game theory. I like your total. I just think if you if you do see it that way, I, I see some some uh, value on taking over on South Carolina fifteen five. Yeah, I'm looking at, as I'm look. I did I did look at the team total. I'm seeing South Carolina at fourteen and a half. Even if they get fourteen and a half, right? We're, like you said, yeah. it's going to be that backdoor fourteen. Maybe right. hit maybe hit seventeen. Um, just because maybe an early 
early play, giving up three points. I just – I really, really strongly think that Georgia gets in the 50s here. Okay. So, for me, it's, it's, it's 48 or 50 for me for Georgia and under 17, 17 under 17 for, for South Carolina because I really think they're going to have a, a really hard time moving the ball against Georgia's D-line. Uh, especially with those injuries up front. I think Spencer Rattler is going to be, you know, having a really hard time on the edge, especially coming off that edge uh, for Georgia. So that's where I'm at. I do look at the, the team total at 14 and a half now that I'm seeing live. Um, that's yeah, actually it went playing, that just playing in my favor, really, where, I'm, yeah. where I actually have them at. It was 13-5, then went up to 15-5. Now it's back to 14-5. So yeah, there's yeah, a lot of action on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I I agree. And that's what we're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I agree. I'm, I'm probably just watching. Um, kind of stay away. I don't have really a yep. take on it. I mean, it makes sense to bet Georgia there, um, but I think with so much line movement and some of the uh, the action that we're seeing, that's moving that line. I mean, that's major money to move lines a point, two points, and things like that. I think um, you know, for me, it's a it's a no play. Um, they are this, teasers for me though. Those are definitely teaser. Plays. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Your teaser, I, I would especially like. We'll get into it later. One of my favorite straight up bets, even though the lines ballooned, I got it on the look ahead, but I would still pulled the trigger again today. I, I think putting OU in a teaser with Georgia and getting both those numbers down like that, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty good combo to, to start any teaser with. Yeah. Uh, my play is, I think, and I already had said this was um, I'm, I'm, I'm back in Franklin, man. I'm back in Penn state, the Nitty Lions against yeah. Auburn. Um, that line uh, right now um, on the score sports book is at three. Um, I have to look at some other books and, and shop around. Um, what is that? Uh, uh, what stadium is that? Jordan Hare, right? Jordan Hare Stadium um, yep. down there in Auburn. Um, I think they get it done. Auburn is a as a as a bad team. Um, you know, they San Jose State gave them some trouble. Um, obviously, they took care of Mercer for Week One, but I think it was pretty telling that San Jose uh, San Jose San Jose State um, gave them some trouble, and then they got Penn State coming in. Um, which is going to be a really a true test. I don't. I think getting a win down there um, is going to be tough for Penn State, but I think this team is just better than they are. They have more talent, and uh, I think Penn State um, that this line. It's interesting that uh, Auburn's getting some um, some money, some 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 money coming in, but I think the line is right where it needs to be at three. Um, and I, I would take Penn State straight up. And if you don't like the straight up play, if you don't like it to kind of protect your investment. Go ahead and throw them a teaser. You get them in a seven-point teaser and get them over that. Uh, or that, or actually, no, six and a half. Don't even give up the, that much juice. Go with minus 110 and get the uh, get that six and, a, and get that three and a half plus three and a half on one side of a teaser. So, Nate, you know what? I I disagree with you on a teaser. Only because if, if, if Auburn's going to win this game, it, it's not going to be one of those games where at, at the, at Penn State, if they're going to lose, they're going to lose. It's not going to be a close one, right? I don't think they lose. I love your pick. I love the minus three, three and a half. The line has not moved at all. They're at Auburn. It's going to be an orange out. Everything is saying take the home team plus the points here. Yeah. But Auburn is just not good. They can't move the ball offensively. Yeah, they're they not. Terrible yeah. defensively. They're getting moved around. San Jose State was throwing the ball all over the field against um, uh, Auburn last week. Yeah. I can only imagine what Sean Clifford is going to be able to do with that offense. Um, I love the three and a half. If I'm going to do anything about it. The rookie the running back? Yeah, he's a freshman kid. He's a freshman, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, Drew Aller. Drew Aller's the freshman. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a beast. He's been, he's been playing really well. So I think if you're going to put money on a teaser, you might as well just put money and buy the points under the two, get it two and a half, get it at three, um, just so you can get a push instead of having to worry about another team on a teaser side. That makes That's sense. That's kind of where I would go. I, I think Penn State that, uh, Let me look at real quick what that, uh, what that juice is on the, um, on the half point. I bet you it's a little bit high at minus 130. Yeah, I mean it, it's, a, it's all hit or miss. I mean, like right now, I mean, you like Bet Rivers is uh, minus three, minus one fifteen. So if you bought the hook, you'd be pushing one thirty. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right. That's so your teaser, like. your teaser is going to be what one twenty minus one twenty. Um, six and a half. It's kind of where you go, you know, because they do six, six and a half. But six and a half, I'm thinking my, it probably you're right. Minus one twenty, minus one fifteen. Right. We're I mean, if you're getting, if you're landing at three, I would go with the three. 
Yeah, yeah, buy, yeah. Buy the the hooks, push, if anything. And just yeah. for everybody listening, for those who are new to this, to new to the betting game and recreational betting, we're throwing out a lot of terms here. We're talking about syndicates. We're talking about um, the lines and how they shift. We're talking about um, minus 115, minus 130. So just a real quick one-on-one basic. When I say line and minus 130, all bets, because um, they really originated out of uh, Vegas when they do the sports books, um, but all bets are based off uh, what we call a unit or $100. So when you see minus 115, minus 130, they'll always bet off $100. And that little bit of 15 or $30 is what's called the juice. Pretty much like, like an interest, like a tax that the books or Vegas puts on it. And that's really how they make their money. I mean, they make their money when you lose, obviously. But they also get a little bit of extra um, on top uh, with, that mi- with that minus 130, minus 115. So... When I say minus 130, it means that you have to bet $130 to win 100, right? So that's how that kind of uh, gets interpreted for those who kind of hearing the language and don't exactly know what they are. Now, a teaser bet is when we can shift the lines. Now, if you don't know what a teaser bet is, I'll put, actually put a link um, in the show uh, where you can go back into a, a whole video of us talking about teasers and parlays. And I'll add that below, man. So let's keep it moving. I want to make sure we keep the show going and keep it short and sweet. Well, well re- real quick, one of my plays, yeah. one of my top five plays is actually in this game. And uh, so I, I just, you know, I wanted to wait yeah, until we that conversation over. Not I bad. actually, in my opinion, the sharpest angle in this particular game, and both of you touched on it, I don't think Auburn can reach their team total. I, so to me, I think under Auburn, 23 and a half points. Now, that did open at minus 110. I think money's coming in. I've bet it. Um, I think it's now minus 125. I'm looking at DraftKings right now. That's my home book, but I, I shop around. Um, minus minus 125 on the 23 and a half. Now, you're getting the half, so um, I like that value. I think that's the sharpest play. I, I love Penn State's defense. Howie Roseman, please look at Joey Porter Jr. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I just don't think Auburn's going to score. Even at home, they might get a couple early touchdowns, you know, crowd's height. I think second half, it's the stranglehold. I hear that. All right, yeah, keep I going, agree. C-Sharp, man. What you got next? Um, Kind of going with the theme. I, I'm I'm big on unders. I, I And this is probably the big one of the bigger matchups of the week. I love – I think you can still get it at 44 and a half. Um, I'm trying to look around. I, I love the under on Texas A&M, Miami. I don't care about Miami hanging 70, whatever, on Bethune-Cookman. That's a joke. That means nothing. And, I, you know, I think A&M is the most anemic offense in the country for the talent they put on the field. They have speed. They have linemen that can block. They have running backs that can make plays. It's their schemes. And week to week, that's not going to change in college. Their offense – is just grind it out. That's who they are. And I like Miami's defense. I think this is a rock fight. I mean, I think this is like a, a 20 to 17 game. I really do. Do you do you think if Jimbo loses this one, is he going to – I mean, he's already, there are already kind of whispers of him getting fired. I think his buyout is $85 million. A&M's got a lot of money, but, boy, $85 million. I don't know. <laughs> right, right. It's tough. Tough. Yeah. All right. No. Uh, so that's under on the what? Forty five and a half, or is it 40? 44 and a half. Maybe you can get forty five. That's coming down. It opened a couple points yeah, higher, so I'm not the only it. one on that. That's that's a big one there. Sharp is that I don't know if you if they missed missed the line already. Open up at forty eight and a half. Is now right. I, I agree. I, I already got the best of the number. So when I'm saying this, like if you yeah. wanted to still pull it, maybe go from like a three unit bet to a one unit bet or yeah. a half unit bet. But I do like this play. How far down would you take that bet? Uh, man, once you start. Well, well, That's yeah, probably right you, where it is now, right? Because I see it at 44 and a half. Yeah, yeah, once I wouldn't cross. I wouldn't cross that 43. Like 23, 20 to me is like max output for this game. So without like flukes, you know, special teams touchdowns or anything like that. So to me, once you cross 43, it's a definite no play. But I still think 44 and a half is a good number. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking tight. I was thinking maybe 21, 24 sounds like about a right about number where it'd be. So do you, I'm assuming you like the dog then, right? You like Miami with the plus, with the plus points. Uh, yeah, I would. I, you know, this is I'm not a huge teaser person, but to me, this would be like a good NFL style teaser where you just tease the t- take the dog, tease it up. 
um, yeah, and feel pretty good about that. Yeah, and when you do this teaser, if you would do this te this teaser, like you said, it's not NFL style, but NFL style, you got to go through key numbers, folks. So three, right. seven, 10, 13. When um, I say NFL numbers, I just mean I expect less blowouts, you know, typically. Yeah. So so when I, it, it, you know, a short dog teased, I like that. Yeah, yeah. All right, B. Diddy, keep the keep the train running, man. What's going? Yeah, man. I'm gonna go over to a to a tough game here in SEC, man. I really, really like Mississippi State traveling to Death Valley and playing LSU evening game. Um, first off, we're gonna just look at the line, right? Is LSU is LSU still? They're they're getting better, right? They're coming a little bit out of that rut they had over the past two years since winning the national championship. They had Jaden Daniels out there playing quarterback. I believe he's a transfer out of Arizona State, if I'm correct. Um, doing what he needs to do, um, very, very athletic. Uh, but my only thing is that Mississippi State and Mike Leach's offense, they have flipped that script over in Mississippi State. And I, I they're my dark horse to win um, the SEC. I want to say they're on SEC East or West, one of the wherever their conference is. They're my dark horse. I think defensively they play really good, really good football. But offensively, they're able to move the ball around in that Mike Leach, Mike Leach offense. Um, another thing, they're vets. Right, they're, they're they're the oldest team in the SEC, so you got a lot of seniors on that team. You got a lot of guys that's been there, done that. Um, going into that hostile environment, LSU, I think is going to be uh, obviously tough for any team. But to, for the number to still be where it is and not move at minus two and a half, that's telling to me. So give me Mississippi State on the road here all day. Um, Will Rogers has been balling right now. Um, I think he lead lead the conference in completion percentage. So he's doing his thing. Give me Mike Leach. LSU is still growing. I feel like though they're still shaky. Um, I'll take the road. I would take the road favorite here, uh, for sure. I like it. I like that. Uh, just quick commentary on that. I uh, it's similar to Vanderbilt. So Mississippi State. I'm with you. I took their over team total win prop before the season started. I, I don't. You know, I didn't pick them as a dark horse to win. Obviously, come out of that conference. But I thought them and Vanderbilt had a good chance of going over their win totals. Mm -hmm. And this week, if Vanderbilt wins, they hit their prop already of three wins. It was two and a half. And this game, Mississippi State at LSU, I circled preseason as must win to go over the prop. So in my opinion, like I've already doubled down on both Vanderbilt and Mississippi State here, just thinking I need these two wins for the prop. So I, I, I'm with you. I love your point about veteran being old, oldest team. In the SEC, like a lot of people overlook that in college. That means so much. Mm -hmm. It reminds me, you know what this game reminds me of? It reminds me of last week's Kentucky, Florida. It's like Kentucky team. We like mm, Kentucky going against Florida. Florida had that big win against Utah the night yep. before. Kentucky comes in, great quarterback. Quarterback made a move and shift in the pocket, head, nose down. They handle their business in the swamp and get up out of there. But they are a veteran team in Kentucky, uh, once again. So, these older teams know how to play in these big hostile environments. It doesn't get to them. And for the line for me, the line not the move going into Death Valley and seeing the uptick in LSU play a little bit is telling me that Mississippi State is the better team. They're going to go in there and handle that business. So nice, nice. So I got a teaser. I got a teaser coming up, and my teaser is based on the spot. Um, and I'll explain what I'm talking about. So I got a two-team teaser, seven-point two-team teaser. First leg. I'm taking Oklahoma going against Nebraska. I don't think this is a spot for Nebraska where they get a boost because of that new coaching change. Um, Nebraska is really, really bad. They're dull. Um, that defense is like they can't get no pressure on that defensive line. I think Oklahoma rolls here. I I, don't, I wouldn't mind the straight. I didn't check where this number started off. I'm assuming that it, it got ticked up a little bit here. But I don't think this is a spot where you get a Nebraska team that bounces back um, from that um, from that head coaching change. So um, I like Oklahoma in this spot. I think they continue to roll, um, and I think they actually beat up on Nebraska pretty pretty big here. Um, but I like to get them under the number seven point T gets them at uh, minus four. Now the second leg of this team uh, tease is another spot. Um, uh, what's that team called? Uh, da -da 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 -da, where is it at? Uh, damn, I just had it up here on my um, on my screen. Oh, UTSA against Texas, right? Um, I'm I'm pushing them up uh, way way through the number with uh, seven points. Get them at plus nineteen and a half. Got a new quarterback coming coming in, um, and he's hobbled as well, right? He he was hobbled he was hobbled as well. 
So um, they uh, who was the guy? Uh, Edwards? I forget his name. Yeah, Quinn. Yours is out. Yours, yeah, yours is out. And then the next guy up got banged up in that last game. So I expect um, UTS um, to keep this game uh, somewhat close, um, even uh, with uh, the double digit spread as it is now. And I also, if you look, they played Houston tough, tough, in that first in, in week one. So I think this team um, can give them give them a uh, give them a run. Now this is just a play on the spot. I think the spots for these teams um, are kind of ticking towards their favor, and I'm getting them on the num on the number. Don't know too much about UTSA. I don't watch too much UTSA, if if any at all, um, on that play. But I think the spot is perfect for them to take advantage of a hobbled and hurt Texas team. Um, and I think they can keep this game close and keep it within two touchdowns. So those are uh, that's my second uh, second uh, play I'm going to be playing on the uh, on the teaser. C I mean, it just feels like the ultimate letdown spot for you know. I keep hearing what scares me in football is when, unless you're a tanking team, when you, when teams take moral victories from a close loss against an opponent they thought's better than them. That to me is like that's cancer in the locker room because you think you're better than you are. Like, oh, we hung with Alabama. We're going to blow out anyone now. Or, you know, that to me, I think this – I won't touch this game, but I could see this being a, the entire slate. This is the ultimate letdown spot. Yeah, yeah. just stay away from me also too. Um, I'm, I'm right with you, Sharp. It's just one of them games you just don't know what's going to happen. I'd rather just watch away, kind of like what you were saying about the Georgia game. All right, Sharp, what you got for us? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, this is an autoplay. <laughs> I've hit it every week. Um, nepotism at its finest. Kirk Ferentz, his son's still running the offense straight into the ground. Their team total is 30 and a half. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know how. I mean, they could score 31. You know, they're, they're playing a team that's so bad on defense. But I, I'm just banking on them just not scoring. Um, it's just an autoplay for me. I wouldn't do more than a unit. You know, I just think of one spot, this could be one of the spots they go over. Like last week, Iowa under versus Iowa State to me was a heavy bet. This week isn't a heavy bet, but it's an auto play. I just don't think Iowa can score. You know, I think they could score 28 to three and win handily, just not get close to 30 and a half. Yeah, I think we were on this. We saw this last year, right, Brent? Anything yeah. in Iowa was under. <laughs> it was just like it didn't matter. It was just under. But you know what? Yeah. Then they'll, then Iowa will surprise you with these fifty point get point fifty point. Yeah, games. that's it. Was that's like those spotty. For... Yeah. So, but no, that's a good play. I think it's a good eye on that one for sure. All right, B Diddy, you got anything else for us? Yeah, man, I do. I, I think we want to. I wanted to add a couple things too to the show. I know we don't have a lot of time in that thirty minutes, but I did want to add. Um, there's two two strong ones that were my last third ones I was looking at, and I'll just throw them back out there. Um, and this is just a strictly line play. And the line play for me here is Washington at home playing against Michigan State. That just doesn't make sense to me. Michigan State's ranked eleventh. Um, I'm not sure how the numbers are kind of coming in here with the Washington being a home team favorite. I've been to Washington. I've seen the games in Washington. It gets a little rowdy, but but it's so open. It's not super, super, super loud. So it's not like it can kind of get too rattled. But for them to be three and a half point favorites being over a field goal here, it's just telling me Washington all day. Um, I, I got to respect the line here. So that'll be a lean on me. It won't be a big play. It'll be like a half a unit here for Washington. Uh, to cover that three and a half at home against a, no, a number eleven ranked team, I don't think that's ever happened uh, in in the betting history of a, a ranked team like that being the underdog uh, going going away. And then, uh, but my play yeah, here for my third pick, looking at the line there, for sure. My my play here though, I love Utah. This is a revenge game here. San Diego State's traveling to Utah. Uh, it's a bitter loss they took on them last year when they were doing their doing their thing. I think Utah kills San Diego State. San Diego State cannot move the ball offensively. They're going to struggle in that altitude. Um, the, the line right now is, tw is 20 and a half. I, I'm, once again, like Georgia, I usually don't like these big high spreads, but I love Utah here. I'll put them in my teasers too. Um, I think Utah has a lot of revenge. It's a revenge game for them. They handle their business. Um, so that's my third play is Utah here at minus 20 and a half, and I will be putting them in my teasers also. Okay. Uh, uh, I've, I've got a couple more. Yeah, go ahead. Keep, keep uh, it out. 
I, I'm, I'm, I, now, I took this on the look-ahead line. Um, I've just been fading Nebraska the whole year. So, last year, I actually thought Nebraska was a really good team, talent-wise. They put some dudes in the NFL. We obviously know Cam Jurgens, But they put in a good safety, and they put in a good corner. Nebraska had one of their better defenses, talent-wise, they've had in a decade last year, believe it or not. And they lost a ton of games. And those kids kept them in those games. I just – don't think they have a chance in hell, excuse my language, of keeping this within three scores. I think this is going to be Dil uh, yeah, Dylan Gabriel's coming out party to the nation. Um, I took this minus five look ahead a week ago, which seemed crazy. Then the line got closed and then reopened, obviously, after Nebraska has been struggling. It, I would take it all the way up to 16 and a half. So, to me, OU, this is blowout written all over it. And that's including – I, I normally in college, I actually power rate um, away games a little more than NFL games. So I actually go with like three and a half, four. And I even give Lincoln another half. So I actually put Lincoln's home advantage to five. And I would still take OU at 16 and a half. So to me, this is one of the heavier bets I have. Again, I have it at minus five. I've already, I would take it at 11 all the way up to 16 and a half. Let me ask you, Sharp, did, did o OU concern you early last week, early in that first half against UTEP? Was that UTEP they were playing? What, sorry, say that again? Did OU concern you a little bit of them not able to score early on, and I believe the game they played last so week? Here's, so here's the deal with OU. Their best offensive lineman was academically ineligible, suspended. He's back, mm -hmm. Wanya Morris. He's going to be a top 100 pick in this upcoming draft. He protects Gabriel's blind side. That's I, I do think their backup left tackle – or, sorry, their backup left tackle was hurt. They were actually down to their third-string left tackle. He was woeful. So I think he, just the fact they were down to third-string left tackle, I think he was a true freshman or redshirt freshman. He okay. struggled, and so you know how it is. If you, if you can't protect your blind side, the quarterback – it's just you can't throw to half the field. All of a sudden, your quarterback's rolling out every time. It just kills the offense. So I think with Wanya Morris back, it's a blowout. So the line movement on this game, I know you're kind of high, definitely high on Oklahoma. Obviously, you live in Oklahoma, right? Yeah, but I don't like OU at all. So, but I okay. do have I do have some sources within the program, so I do get intel on who's playing. Hey, hey you can't give out everything, Shar. Relax. All right. No, no, it's just the line. The line movement away from Oklahoma is a little bit nervous for me. With that 14 and a half opening, and then now at 10 and a half, is a little concerning. Of what do they not know? What do I not know? That's happening there in Lincoln, Nebraska. So, um, okay, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna trust you, Sharp. I'm gonna probably use them in my teaser to get them down to a zero to at least to win the game. So, I'm definitely gonna mark that down for sure. What was that play again? Just so we people know. Well, I think you can. You might be able to get ten or eleven. Shop around. I, I was looking all over. I see some tens. I see some elevens. Um, mm -hmm. I see a 10 I, again. I, I took it at five earlier in the week, but again, I'm giving out plays. So, I, I this kind of goes to the. Uh, my under earlier that's now 44 and a half in the A&M game that, that I got at a better number, but I would still yeah. take it now. I just still have a power rate at a different number. What what game are we talking about? OU. I would take OU oh, minus okay. 10 over Nebraska. I mean, I think this is going to be an absolute blowout. Okay. Um, And for my last play, and this is just going to be a, a half unit play. I don't um, mm -hmm. with this spread, but um, I like Rutgers. I like Rutgers beating the Bulls out of Temple. I'm not gonna lie, like that line is ticking up. Garbage um, game. Rutgers, uh, I think they had a tough one early on, but then obviously against Wagner they blew them out. But last year they beat the bullshit out of Temple. Um, I think it was like 60 to, to like 14 or something like that. So they don't have a problem running up the score. I think this this Rutgers team is just up and down, um, more talented than Temple. Um, Tibble's still got a, you know, having a tough time after Matt Rule has left. Um, with getting some recruitment and talent coming in there. Um, so I like Rutgers here to roll, be win at least by three touchdowns. No, I like that. I, I was looking at that closely too. I, I that was going to be one of my plays, and I said, you know what, I, I got other plays on the board that I'll, I'll announce. But I do like that play. Um, that 18 is a little weird number there for it to fall in 18. I don't, I don't really. That number just just looks ugly as as a spread. So <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, that's why I'm I said good. it would be a little bit a lesser unit play for me. Um, but I, I don't, yeah. I, I just don't see how Rutgers. I mean, it could be a back door there at the end, but I don't see how Rutgers is not up by at least three touchdowns some point in this game and, and keep moving forward. 
So, Moss, I do got to jump, but I do want to give yeah. these last two. I got an underdog and then teaser play, and then I, that's what I have written down for the, right. for the guys on our, on our fans on our uh, on our stream. So, underdog plays, I got two. Western Kentucky plus six and a half at Indiana. I like Western Kentucky here. They can move the ball offensively. Defensively, they have a lot of takeaways. I want to say like almost – I don't know what the number is, but it's a high amount of takeaways they've had defensively. So, they're playing strong defensively. I think Indiana – is solid. They're not great. They're not good. They're just solid. And I think Western Kentucky can kind of keep up with, with uh, Indiana. Give me the six and a half there. Purdue. I know uh, the numbers aren't looking that way, but Purdue versus Saint Syracuse. I like Purdue plus one and a half. The better experienced team is there again. Is that Big Ten team at Purdue? Offensively, they can move the ball. Hughes is like a surprise team. They're like, oh man, look at Hughes. They're they're doing so well, but they ain't play nobody. That's that's really good. I know that first game was a big surprise when they blew out um who was it? They blew out Louisville too. Louisville, but we know who yeah. Louisville is, right? No, like I'm with you. So give me Purdue plus one and a half. I actually put two units on this Purdue game. Ooh, a lot. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's I am I'm, I'm a little shaky now the way the way it's looking, but I I will still take it plus plus Purdue, one and a half. Purdue, Purdue, Diddy, let me ask you real quick. You, do you see a shootout in that game? Because my next play I'm about to give out. I I took I like the over. I do. I think yeah. that's first of 30 wins. Yeah, I, I love the. I like. The, I think it's going to be a shootout. I think they're both getting the thirties. I do. Okay. I just don't trust this Q's team here. I'm going to give Q's being at home a little bit of advantage and why it's there. But give me Purdue, the more experienced team, playing better teams over their conference, um, to be able to go in here and handle business at plus one and a half. And then my teaser play really quickly. I'm going to three team teaser is ten points, right? So we're going to take KSU, Kansas State, um, get them down to three and a half, playing Tulane. I, Kansas State is tough. They're a tough team. They play really methodical football. Um, I think they're a better team to be able to handle at least three points here against Tulane. Uh, once again, I'm going to use your pick there in Oklahoma. I'm going to take Oklahoma to a pick here. That brings them down to a half or, or a zero. I, I had Georgia in that spot, but I'd rather go with a pick if you're really confident, Sharp, for them to win. And then I'm going to go Appalachian State down to two and a half. Yeah, I was playing Troy State. So that's I'm my three start. team teaser at 10 points. I got to jump right now because I got a meeting because I'm still working. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Go, guys. All right, nice brother. Sharp. We'll, be, we'll be in touch. Yes, yeah. sir. All right, C Sharp. That's somebody at my door, too, man. We got to. <laughs> I know I look, I know you itching. You itching. But no, no, no. This, this is good. This was a good. This was a good first one. I, I, I like it. I, one quick, one more quick one before I get out of here. Um, I know it's super high scoring, um, but just I just trust me. If you want to parlay it with that last over I just gave Syracuse game, uh, yeah. I'm taking the over in Maryland SMU. Maryland. Yep, that yeah. game is I about to be list. first one to forty. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. I love it. All right, everybody. I appreciate everybody jumping on, man. We got to go. We're doing this during the day. We're doing, taking the job from the job. But I hope you got a lot of plays. I hope you got a lot of information. We'll get more from myself. C Sharp and B Diddy, man. So thank you as always for coming in. Make sure you hit that notification button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you boys and ladies next week. See you. Go Bucks.